everyone, my name is Bethany and you're watching a writing werewolf video. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Raven Boys, Maggie Stiefader. Uh I think I'm saying that right. So this is part of my uh, YA, YA as an adult series which is where I go back and I read books that I read as a teenager or books that are uh, like popular YA fiction books now and I give my thoughts on them now that I'm 23 and that's apparently an adult. My personal reading tastes have moved slightly on from from young adult fiction and now I read a lot of horror and a lot of uh, crime and a lot of mystery and a lot of dystopian fiction um, but it's always nice to go back and see what you're missing you know and some some YA novels are I would argue are more for adults than they are for, for young adults but you know I haven't come across any of those yet but we will. This video we will be talking about the Raven Boys and um, so I've read this whole series twice I think I've read the first two three times. Um, there was a period, I think I read, yeah, I think I read the first two, and then I got the third and the fourth, when the fourth came out, and I read all of them then, and last, I think it was October, either October or November, I read them all again. Um, so I have really conflicting thoughts on this series, because I really like it, I really like the way it's written, but... It could definitely be better and I know a lot of the popular <laughs> a lot of what people like about this series is, is some of the things I don't like so this should be interesting before we get into this I want to say this video will contain spoilers in order to discuss it I can't I can't keep can't keep spoilers out um but yeah uh, so we're gonna have a little breakdown of characters so you guys know who I'm talking about and then we're gonna have uh, we're gonna go through each of the books and then I'm gonna give my overall thoughts. So our character breakdown, so you you have Blue. Blue is our first main character who's introduced. In, in total you have like five main characters um, and they form the the main sort of uh, what's been what's been called the Gangzi uh, for reasons which will soon become clear. Um, so yeah so your first main character that we're introduced to is Blue Sergeant and um, she's your sort of stereotypical weird kid. She comes from a family of psychics and she's the only one amongst them who isn't psychic and um, which is an interesting dynamic but in, in exchange for that she then has the ability to amplify other people's psychic abilities and um, she's very uh, environmentally conscious she's uh, funny and um, she starts she's not afraid to stand up for herself and she can be a bit, a bit aggressive and i really like her as a character um, i really like all of these characters actually as characters i guess but um blue's one of my favorites so your other sort of your second main character that we're introduced to is Gansey. So Gansey is like your stereotypical rich kid, except he doesn't like using his privilege um, when he can when he can do things for himself. He likes old things. He's passionate. He's well studied. He doesn't sleep much. He is obsessed with finding um, this old Welsh king Glendower, which is the overall arcing plot of the series. Um, then you have Gansey's friends, so you have Ronan. Ronan is um, your sort of stereotypical bad boy. They're all sort of, they're all sort of, at first glance, they're all sort of stereotypes, and then you sort of, as you learn more about them, they become, you know, fully fledged characters and so much more than their stereotypes. And it is, it is one of my favourite things about the series is just, just how the characters interact with each other. Um, yeah, so Ronan's aggressive on the outside but actually has like a heart of gold he will do literally anything for his friends but he also has this innate ability to pull things out of his dreams yeah and ronan's ronan's ability to pull things out of his dreams is something that becomes very important to the to the main plot um and then you have adam adam's a bit of an outcast he's poor he goes to this posh expensive school on a, on a scholarship and people look down on him for it um he's really good with his hands he's really smart he's really like like mechanically like gifted um and also uh later on in the series he <laughs> basically embraces this magical dream forest um doesn't make sense <laughs> but it is important that's that's his personal development um and then also you have noah and noah is <sighs> how do i explain noah noah is well prone to possession uh first of all He's, he's, he's a ghost, basically. Um, that's, in the, that's the main plot point in the first book. It's one of the first things that Noah says. Um, so it's not, it's not, 
it's kind of a spoiler, but it's not really a spoiler. But it's okay, because we all know this isn't going to be a spoiler-free video, because I've already stated that. Anyway, um, so, the way these characters interact with each other is one of the best parts of the book. Hands down, like, ha literally, hands down, um, their interactions. You get interactions between all of them in different ways, and different, like, groupings, and it's just, it's the, it is the highlight of the book, is how these characters interact with each other. And you also have several like background characters that are important and also funny in their own way. So you've got um, Mara, who's Blue's mum, and her two friends, Persephone and Kala. Um, their interactions are funny. You've got uh, you've got the Grey Man, who is an assassin. You've got um, like specific teachers, and you have you also have Henry Chang, who kind of is a main character, but only in the last book. He sort of joins this little grouping. He kind of replaces Noah. We'll discuss him later. Moving on to the first book, The Raven Boys. So this is an excellent start to this. We like psychics, we like the mystery, we like the Welsh kings, we like the ghosts. Uh, it is one of those books that's quite dense with information, so there is a lot of sort of background knowledge that you have to get your head around before you can like enjoy the prose. And it's done, it is balanced, the, the, the actual prose is balanced really well in um, sort of developing the characters and introducing you to to all of to this world and all of this information and it doesn't throw it doesn't throw it is, it's a lot to take in but it doesn't throw everything at you at once it's sort of like it is done in like a measured way um so it isn't too overwhelming um the ending of the first book is really rewarding you also have the slow burn romance that goes across the entire series um so the very first thing you learn about blue is that other than her not being a psychic in a house of psychics is that whenever anyone tells her fortune the first thing they say is that the moment she kisses her true love he will die and the very first sort of opening chapter is blue seeing the ghost of Gansey and realizing that he will die within a year and that he's his true love and she will be the one that kills him so you have this ticking clock throughout the entire series which is a really good way to push it forward i think um it is it is a relatively unique concept i've never seen anything with so many like elements in it that works to the same extent like a lot of the time when an author tries to throw in so many elements it's just not it doesn't work they don't balance it properly but this is really well balanced um it really resonated with blue as a character and this i think the raven voice is my favorite one out of the four of them um purely because well <laughs> let's go to dream thieves in a minute but blue, this book is mostly blue. Yeah, this book is mostly blue uh, with like, say if it, in a ranking system, it would be blue and then it would be Gansey, um, in terms of who this, who this book is about. Um, and I really like that because I really, I really connected with blue and blue is one of my favorite characters. Um, it's not really a self-contained book because of this overarching plot for the series, because that is, determined to be the main plot immediately. I don't think it would work as a standalone because it doesn't finish, it doesn't, n nothing is like tied up neatly, it ends on like a cliffhanger um, and there is quite a lot of at stake by the time you get to the final pages uh, but it is, it is my favourite, it is, my f it is it's, it's an excellent book, I don't know what else I can say. Book number two, The Dream Thieves, is my second least favourite. <laughs> In this book, the viewpoints go wider, so instead of just having Blue and, and Gan, actually, from this point forward in the entire series, that's when you get a lot of Ronan chapters. Um, and honestly, I think this is the series' downfall. And I know, I know, a lot of people love Ronan. I like Ronan as a character. Um, but a lot of people love Ronan, and I feel like after the Raven Boys, with the the attention that was on Ronan. Ronan was then sort of became the main main character instead of Blue or Gansey, which sort of pushes their romance aside, which is, I'm not going to lie, I find it upsetting because I think their romance is really nice. It does add another sort of slow burn, element to the slow burn I guess, but but Ronan's, Ronan's chapters are really heavy. It deals with a lot of like drugs and grief and you know, ag like aggression and it's you sort of lose the whimsy and the lightheartedness of Gansey and Blue's chapters that you had in the first book. Um, and it also moves away from the overarching series quest to find to find uh, the Welsh King Glendower. Um, and I think the main plot is more interesting than Ronan's like, side plots. Some people may disagree, but I th feel like if, if this series was by itself, 
then this would be f like having so many Ronin chapters would be fine. You now have the Dreamer trilogy, which is a spin off of the Raven Boys, and that focuses entirely on Ronin and about pulling things from his dreams and his his weird ability. And he goes back to how to to how this happened to him and how he managed to do this. And it's because of that, I feel a bit I don't know cheated. I found myself a lot more bored with this with this one in Blue Lily Lily Blue. This one more so because it was so many Ronin chapters, if that makes sense. It's not inherently a bad book, it's just not my favourite. So then we come to the third book, which is Blue Lily Lily Blue. So I love the way Blue and Gansy fall in love in this book. The sort of idea of them going on silent midnight drives where they just hold each other's hand and don't talk to each other. I love that. That was just, just, oh, just made my, my day when I read those. Um, at this point, he still doesn't know he's going to die which is, is, it does provide a bit of dramatic irony because of course we know that he's going to die and you are getting ever, ever closer to that, that ticking clock. Um, and it's very, very slow burn. The main plot is still in the background for most of this book, which is a bit of a disappointment because I really, really like the main plot and you, it is sort of pushed to the side for, for Adam's development and more of Ronan's development. I did like that we got more Adam chapters, but again, I feel like you could, if you took out so many of the, not not so much so much of the development, but you could quite easily condense this down into three different books if you focus more on the main plot rather than, you know, sort of meandering through other characters. That'd be my one main criticism of this series is that it does, it's not as tightly, it's not as tightly plotted as it could have been. But yeah, there's not much else to say about it. It's not, it's not my favourite. It's not. It's not. It's just sort of there. It's just sort of there. It's a bit. It's a bit like Eclipse, I guess. It's just. It's just the third book. It's just there. And then we come to the Raven King. So the Raven King is a conclusion to the series. This is the fourth book. Um, it wasn't a perfect conclusion. It was a bit anticlimactic. Um, the quest for Glendower is a bit. Is a bit anticlimactic. But I did like. I did like the end. How it. Well, maybe not how it ended. There was like a wee bit of like descending action after like the main plot point, but I I like Blue and Gansey's story how that ended. Um, Henry Chang, Henry Chang is introduced in Blue, Blue Blue Blue, I think, and then he becomes like a main, becomes one of the main five in in the Raven King, and I I really do think he was replacing Noah, which is a shame because I really like Noah. I really like Noah as a character, and Noah sort of drops off in Blue 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 Blue, Blue who rarely ever appears. Um, but Henry Chang seemed like a bit of a last minute replacement for him. Um, his, his development came across a little bit rushed, like you were expected to like him immediately. And then, you know, he had like his, here's his tragic backstory, so that we'll like him. Which was, you know, interesting, but I, it did feel a bit forced. It wasn't as enjoyable as it would have been if it had been the original five from the very beginning. Um, not all of the characters had a proper conclusion as well, which I was a bit annoyed about. I know there's other like, I know like the Dreamer trilogy is coming out now, but that does focus mainly on Ronan and honestly all I want is a trilogy that just focuses on Gansey, Blue and Henry roaming the country, that's it, that's all I want. So in conclusion, it's a good series, it's just a little bit disappointing. I did like the first, I've read the first of the Dreamer trilogy, Um, I did really like Call Down the Hawk, it's just I feel like, I feel like having, starting with, starting really strongly with Blue and Gansey's story and then taking this totally different direction to go and talk about Ronan is just I feel like it wasn't, not necessarily unnecessary, but I feel like it did, it, yeah, I felt like it was unnecessary. One thing I did really enjoy about this series is that the writing quality is amazing. The pose is like oddly poetic for like a young adult fiction, because a lot of the time you read young adult novels and it's quite like to the point, first person, present tense, here's what's happening, here's what I did, here's how I felt, here's what, you know. This is what happened. It's a lot of telling rather than showing, whereas this is is it's, it's in third person. But it's the way the characters inter interact with each other is so lifelike and so realistic. That is my absolute favorite thing about this series. Um, and it's just the prose itself, like the na the narration is just so like it has this sort of gentle charm to it, and I just I just loved it. It feels really otherworldly, which really which really like emphasizes the fact that they're going after this mystical Welsh king who was supposed to have died centuries ago. And it is sort of 
it is sort of whimsical in 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 certain chapters and it's just it's just I just really love the writing quality of this and that's probably why when I do I won't I won't you know it's one it's not one of those series that I will be reading immediately after finishing but it is good enough that I will review it again at one point at some point or another and uh, I just it'll it'll be the writing quality that pulls me through that was my thoughts on the Raven Cycle um have you read it what did you think um I'll post a link down below to my blog and my Twitter and my Instagram you can follow me on all of those places um, my blog, I post book reviews every Monday. Um, my Twitter and my Instagram, I just uh, talk a load of rubbish. Um, come say hi. Come follow me. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.